Scientists just gave holograms a quantum upgrade. And while this sounds like something out of a B-grade science fiction movie, it really happened. For starters, making a hologram or performing holography is a really useful tool beyond just PR stunts. And making a hologram quantum isn't just combining a couple of buzzwords to make it sound cool, it actually holds a lot of promise for applications. Even more interestingly, this quantum hologram was able to image something that the photons hadn't even seen. So how does this work? What is so quantum about this hologram? How can it image something that it hasn't seen? And what are the applications of a quantum hologram? Let's discuss it. Photographs are made by measuring the intensity of light to make a black and white image and the energy of that light to make a color one. Holograms are different. Holograms are made by superimposing wavefronts that generate interference patterns. And it's this interference pattern that makes the hologram. Similar to that of a double slit experiment, the light has peaks and troughs and these add up to make the image. And this is the distinct difference between a photograph and a hologram. To make a hologram, you need a coherent light source. In most cases, this means a laser. Then you need an object to measure, which is also quite reflective. And finally, you need a special type of film to capture this image. This works by taking a single laser beam and then splitting it into two. One laser beam goes off and hits the holographic film, while the other goes off and hits the object. The light is then scattered off the object, and this scattered light then hits the holographic film and creates the interference pattern. The combination of these two wavefronts, the coherent laser source and the scattered light off the object, they interfere in such a way that the image of the object is now captured inside that holographic film. Now, this is a great technique, but what if you have to measure something delicate? Shining a high-energy laser beam onto something may destroy it, or it simply might not work due to energy constraints of the object. To overcome this obstacle, scientists have turned towards quantum mechanics, and this allowed them to make a hologram with light that had never seen the object to begin with. So how does it work? How can you generate an interference pattern with light that hasn't interacted with the object? The trick is to use a quantum property of light, a mechanism known as quantum entanglement. The scientists were able to use entangled photons to transfer information from a photon that interacted with the object to a photon that didn't. They did this by first generating entangled photon pairs using a non-linear crystal, which parametrically downconverts the light. Basically, the nonlinear crystal converts a single photon with frequency x and makes two photons with frequency 2x, such that the energy is conserved. Importantly, they don't necessarily have to have the same frequency at the end. The two photons can have different energies, which is very useful for applications. So now the scientists have two entangled photons. They need to direct them in different ways to create the quantum hologram. This is an illustration of their setup. An ultraviolet laser shown in purple shoots a beam of photons into their non-linear crystal, which produces a red and green beam. The red beam is selected off using a dichroic mirror, which reflects certain wavelengths while transmitting others. Then the beam is reflected back onto the camera. The purple beam is reflected at the end and then is also redirected onto the camera, acting as the reference laser. The green beam is reflected onto the object where it interacts with the object, and the entanglement between the green and the red beams allows the information to be transferred between the two photons. So that while the green beam has seen the object, the red has not, and it is this beam that forms the hologram. With this setup, they were able to produce quantum holograms of several different objects. While these images may not be particularly impressive objects, they're an important calibration step to quantify how quantum holograms work and therefore find what applications they might be viable for using for. A necessary step before moving towards more complex structures. So why is this an interesting result? Well, any demonstration of new quantum mechanics is interesting, but there's more to this story. And this comes down to the wavelengths of the light that the non-linear crystal can produce. As I mentioned earlier, the two photons don't have to have the same energy. And in fact, we can make this energy difference extremely large. And this is of particular importance to medical research. Holograms are actually already used in medical research, but there are problems with using this technique. The light can sometimes hurt us or it can be absorbed rather than reflected, therefore ruining the image. 
And for applications where we want to image something that's actually inside of someone, this becomes even more prevalent as the, the wavelength of the light really matters on how far it can penetrate inside of our bodies. On the other side, the resolution of holograms is directly related to the wavelength of the light, with higher energy being better. So to get the best of both worlds, we want to have an entangled pair of photons, one which has an energy in the ultraviolet spectrum, or the other way down in the infrared. This way we can get the best resolution holograms while also being able to image inside of people. This being said, there's still a lot of work to go into this before we start to see real applications of this type of technology. But it's certainly an interesting experiment and I'm sure it's gonna spur on more research. There are a lot of interesting demonstrations of quantum mechanics these days. One recently interesting demonstration was where scientists were able to untangle large mesoscopic drums being one of the largest objects ever to be entangled. If you want to know more, you can check out this video right here. Thanks for watching, have fun, and see you next time.